Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. And today we're going to talk about some of the many benefits of growing tropical plants. Now, next to me is a pot of sundews, otherwise known as Drosera capensis. And I don't know if you can actually see there. I'm going to try and zoom in with some software. But from where I'm looking here, these droplets of dew are sparkling like stars in the sky. Uh, amazing little plant and if you've never grown them definitely worth having a little go at it so let's dive in and we are in so just in case you couldn't quite see it on the intro there you can definitely see the those fantastic little dew drops there just sparkling away it's a lovely little plant and what i didn't realize well it's a group of plants isn't it what i didn't realize is that they do get quite big I thought when they were in the first year that that was as big as they were going to get, but they're, they're growing and growing and growing at the moment. This year it's been a really good year for them. And I've just ordered some new ones, actually, um, some new varieties, which hopefully will come very soon from uh, Hans Fly Traps, I believe I ordered them from. So anyway, we're talking about the many benefits of growing tropical plants in, well, wherever you grow them, whether you grow them in a greenhouse or whether you grow them... Um, in a grow room, wherever you grow them. Obviously, I grow in a greenhouse. So let's get started with this. So number one, one of the benefits, in my eyes anyway, and it's all centered around mental health. Now, obviously, this is a particularly, I hesitate to use the word, trendy topic at the moment with COVID as what's going on. Uh, maybe not, maybe trendy is the wrong word. It, it's, it's at the forefront of people's minds, I should say, because obviously you've got people who are suffering people who are at home, they might be on their own and they're lonely and they're not able to get out. Now, I'm just thinking in terms of my own situation, my uh, father-in-law is in his mid eighties. and The only thing that kept him going, kept him interested was obviously coming up to our house or going to the bingo because he enjoys playing bingo. And he still drives and he used to take himself off to the, and that's all stopped unfortunately, because we're in the middle of a lockdown and it's only going to be like early December before he's allowed to go again. And what that's going to look like, I don't know. You know, if they're not allowed to get up and wander and talk to each other, then I don't know how that's actually going to be of benefit to him. But that is definitely something at the forefront of people's minds at the moment. So talking about the benefits of growing tropical plants, um, I'll just take, tell you a little bit of my own story. Um, and we'll just focus on something else while I do that. So... I was a primary school teacher for the, the majority of my career, as it were, and I got out of primary school teaching, I was teaching altogether, in fact, because of various aspects of my health. Um, it wasn't mental, it was a physical thing, something that I was born with. I won't go into details over it, but suffice it to say that I ended up finishing with the teaching and I found myself doing something completely different, couldn't be more different uh, from being in a classroom with kids to uh, driving around in a van and basically doing people's gardens for them. That was just, that was one of my businesses. I had another private tuition business as well, which is still going by the way. Um, but as far as my day-to-day -day life went, it was completely different. And I found that when it got round to winter and the gardening stopped and the business dried up, as it does every winter, as it's done for the past 10 years that I've been doing this, that I was getting a little bit down. Now, I'm not talking about clinical depression here, diagnosed clinical depression. I'm talking about getting a little bit down. And that was a factor to do with not being able to work the same. Obviously, I could still run my other business. That's all done online. Um, but I couldn't, you know, I was inside all day and I've been used to being outside. So the shorter days, the miserable weather, the fact that all the plants died down, the long, dark nights that, that went seemingly went on for, you know, many, many, many hours. And I think that, well, I know that has an effect on people other than me. They call it SAD, don't they? Seasonal Affective Disorder. It's not just me that it affects. It affects lots and lots of people. Monty Don of Gardener's World has talked about his mental health problems or struggles or issues on many an occasion. And he, he always says that December and January are the worst times for him because all his gardens died down. 
So, what better thing to do than this, than to grow tropical plants? Because straight away you alleviate a lot of that problem. Because I'm in here now, it's going dark outside, I've got the grow lights on. It could be the middle of summer for me in here. And I'm surrounded by fragrances, blooms. I mean, I've got the Brugmansia bloom there. Nothing could be more tropical looking than that. It's sending out its fragrance at the moment. I've got the Buragira bloom there, sending out a very, very strong fragrance. I've got the Oncidium Shari Baby, smelling like chocolate. I've got the, over here, the Zygopedalum Trozy blue, which is sending a beautiful fragrance out. I've got this Cambria here. Um, I can't remember which one. Oh, Purple Princess, sending a lovely fragrance out. What better way than to raise your spirit and to, to, than to surround yourself with this kind of thing? So that was one of the main reasons that I started growing these plants. I used to grow, like lots of other people, uh, tomatoes and pelagonium seeds and, and bedding plant seed seedlings to get out into, into the summer months. But that only starts in late February, early March. There's plenty of months before that, long, cold, dark months. So yeah, number one is all about mental health. Mental health is a big issue and it's something that you can help to alleviate for yourself by growing tropical plants. So number two, studies have shown that sights, sounds, smells of the natural world lower the heart rate and the stress levels. So if you happen to be one of those people who go off to work every day and come home with huge levels of cortisol surging through your veins, then you are going to be somebody who needs to wind down. Now, what many people do is they reach for the alcohol, don't they? They reach for a bottle of wine or gin or whatever the particular poison is, and they think that's going to calm them down. And okay, you know, I'm partial to the odd little glass of wine myself, but I'm not doing it to lower my stress levels. I'm doing it just to kind of participate in a social activity and enjoy the taste of it. I can do without it. And um, this is what plants can do for you. If you surround yourself with plants, and I know I'm preaching to the converted here, but if you surround yourself with plants, then it naturally lowers your stress levels. It's been proven. There are scientific studies that show that this is the case. So number three in my list of the many benefits of growing tropical plants. Most greenhouse growers, when you look around the UK, tend to use their greenhouse through the traditional season, the growing season. Now, the traditional growing season in the UK is from Easter onwards up to September, October. I know a lot of people want to finish in September. Uh, maybe they feel that they've had enough of it by then. I don't know. But if you've spent some money on a greenhouse, even the cheap greenhouses, a six by eight foot greenhouse, a decent one, will set you back over a thousand pounds, I think. If you splashed out that amount of money, then are you going to want to leave it lying doing nothing for four or five months of the year? I used to do that, and guess what happens? The shed fills up with junk, the garage fills up with junk, especially when you've got children. The greenhouse then fills up with junk, and then you don't use it. And then, like the majority of the greenhouses in the UK, they just kind of sit there collecting grime and algae and whatever else. Usually uh, children's toys, if uh, I'm any judge. So if you fill your greenhouse with tropical plants, then at least you're getting your money's worth. And look at this, this is a begonia. This is begonia fuchsioides. Um, look how tall it is now. Just take you on a little detour here. So this is about four foot tall now looking particularly nice. It's migrated from one of the benches to the floor because it's looking so good. It doesn't seem to be bothered by the cooler weather as the Begonia Luxurians did over here. That had a few yellow leaves, so I've had to put it over into the warmer side. So yeah, number three was that your greenhouse will likely get full of junk if you don't do something about it and get growing some plants that last all year round. So number four, tropical plants mean you've no seasons. 
in here it's always spring and it's always summer for me i don't feel like there is a, a definitive line because all these plants grow around the tropical regions so at some point in every single month i've got blooms now isn't that a fantastic thing to be able to say i can look at flowers and i can smell fragrances that i know that somewhere in the world they're growing or their relatives are growing wild and pumping out that fragrance and blooming and these plants don't know don't tell them they don't know that they're not actually living in the wild and getting the light from the hot tropical sun and the humidity from those fantastic refreshing rains in the rainforest they don't know that i'm providing that for them so number five on my list is all about learning learning is a pleasurable thing it can raise your self-esteem it can give you a sense of well-being and a sense of purpose especially to people who are a little bit older and uh, maybe have retired i mean maybe not older you know people retire in the 50s don't they i'm not one of those lucky people although to be honest i don't really want to retire um i really don't know what you do you just you just stop stop work i always feel, feel like i need a purpose um, as well as a hobby so yeah for for me i'm okay with the purpose thing but for many people they need a purpose in life and this might provide it i find that learning isn't a curve you very often hear people talking about the learning curve it's a steep learning curve well for me anyway maybe that's just my brain i don't know but my brain it's more of a bumpy line than a learning curve i find that i learn things forget them learn them forget them and um, learning all about plants i find isn't a chore at all it's an absolute pleasure and i know i know full well that i'm going to forget these things i could go and pick up one of the plants that i've done a video on now and i'll only remember half of the things that i put into the video if that i might not even remember that so if somebody came into my greenhouse now and said to me right here we've got to uh, what have we got over here? Uh, a Dendrobium densiflorum. Right, tell me all about the Dendrobium densiflorum. Tell me it's kernies. Well, I'll probably remember half of it. I certainly wouldn't remember where it came from or what its specific temperature was. I can give you a ballpark figure, but that's about, that's about it. Uh, but, you know, I don't feel any shame over that. It doesn't matter. It's my greenhouse. It's my learning journey and i know that the more i care for it and the more i look after it year on year the more chances are that i'll remember in future and that's fine and that's what learning should be it shouldn't be something where we feel like we're pressured into it and we've got to you know every little tidbit that we learn we've got to remember it and recall it or like some kind of test um, i don't see it like that so yeah learning is pleasurable learning isn't something that's a nice smooth curve like it, like is often talked about learning is a bumpy ride but it's something that can be immensely satisfying when you get it right so number six is all about community now this is something that i didn't really anticipate when i started this i didn't start growing tropical plants with any thoughts of youtube or any thoughts of getting involved in any community but it's evolved naturally um, and I found the plant community to be completely different from other communities that I've been involved with in the past, especially on YouTube, more YouTube than ever. Um, possibly one reason is because just plant people are fantastic, but maybe the other reason is because as YouTubers, that domain in the comments is your domain. I can, if, I, if there's a comment I don't like, I can delete it. If there's a person that's disrespectful or says something downright nasty, I can block them. It's very easy. I've no qualms about doing it. Um, since I started about probably an hour, 13 months into this kind of journey on YouTube, I think I blocked four people. That's all. And that was just not for, not for disagreeing with me. It was for being nasty and just downright horrible. Um, I didn't get involved in a back and forth with them. I just removed the comments and blocked them. And I'm quite happy to do that. And that's probably why the YouTube community is it's such a nice place to be because somebody is actually monitoring what's going on. And in most cases, that's going to be the channel owner, isn't it? Not so with Facebook, unfortunately. I do find the Facebook groups are okay, especially if they have some really good moderators. 
but even then you do find uh, quite a bit of nastiness in the Facebook groups. But it's not just the socials uh, the community comes into it because I ended up joining the North of England Orchid Society. Now, of course, it's not been that good this year because of the COVID thing, but I'm still in contact with people. Obviously, I'm in contact with Ed. Um, I'm in contact with the, the president of the, of the society. I'm one or two other people. Um, I watch the videos and things that they send out and they keep in contact with me via the emails. So there is a community there and I know that as soon as we all get vaccinated it'll come back and we'll all enjoy getting together again and going to the shows. Even if you've no intention of actually showing an orchid, which at the moment I haven't, I'm not bothered about that. I'm more interested in learning and kind of hooking up with people. So the community is definitely a bonus. Um, I'm talking just about orchids there, but I have lots and lots of tropical plants. So I'm also involved, uh, mainly on Facebook really, in the groups with the Streptocarpus Society, with Carnivorous Plant Society, with the Fern Society. And that's what's so great by getting into such an eclectic mix of plants. The, the issue for me really is where do I stop? You know, which group of plants do I miss out because I'm so fascinated by them all. So number seven is about satisfaction. Growing plants is so, so satisfying, especially when you failed and then you've adjusted and got it right. So I'll take you through here to this Miltoniopsis over here. So this is Newton Falls, which I've showed before. And this was not, it's not one of the ones that I killed. I've killed quite a few Miltoniopsis, well about three, I think. That one down there is actually looking much, much better now. It's beginning to show me some real growth even though i've nearly thrown it out a few times but this what this plant shows me is that i can now grow miltoniopsis i know what it needs and what have we got here we've got a spike here there's another one tucked away over there another one over there it's got three spikes coming on it now that for me is really really satisfying and um, growing a plant like this this is a dendrobium sarnook it's a phalaenopsis dendrobium uh, this was another one that was nearly dead but again I've adjusted my conditions for it and the way I look after it and now it's growing a nice strong growth there and another little one down there that's immensely satisfying so I think if anybody is after um, some kind of purpose to the life and wants to feel that that sense of satisfaction then getting into this kind of thing is definitely something well recommended. This Lelia Ancept is going to bloom very, very soon. I'm very excited about that. That's my second Lelia Ancept. This one only had a few tiny roots. To get this big spike on it is really, really satisfying. Uh, to bloom the Zygo for the third time since I bought it is very, very satisfying. These Caleria over here, two Caleria down here. Now you might have seen these when they were in full bloom over in the cool side. They look spectacular. The weather came along, the cooler temperatures, and they looked like they were dying down for the winter. Brought them through to the warm side, they've sprung back to life. And I wouldn't be surprised if they don't begin to flower soon. That's really, really satisfying. I enjoy that. I like that to happen. So that's number seven. Number eight is my kind of teacher's sense of wonder. And I think you've got to have a sense of wonder if you're going to teach children, especially the younger children. Now, things like this, Cephalotus, I'm absolutely fascinated by this. And I'll tell you what I'm fascinated by. Not just these amazing structures here to catch insects, but the fact that over here we have uh, an Apenthes, uh, this one's Gaia. And these wonderful little traps here, they are, they're quite big, aren't they, that have evolved to grow at the end of these leaves. Um, t t took millions of years for this to happen and came simply from uh, one plant just having a, a little hole at the end and collecting a little bit of water in it. And insects getting in there and, of course, that providing some nutrition for the plant. And carry that through over generation and generation and generation and you find that you end up with this amazing structure and what's so incredible is that this plant has come up with the same solution that this plant did even though they are no they share no relatives whatsoever it's what's called convergent evolution 
Um, that to me is absolutely amazing. You only get that with plants. I'm one of these people that look at the, I mean, I watch all the nature shows on TV, all the David Attenborough stuff, absolutely love it. But I find myself looking past the monkeys and the giraffes and looking in the background at the plants. I wish somebody would just focus on plants for once and let us see all the incredible things that plants can do because plants is where it all started. Um, having a fascination with these things is something that has lifted me especially in these times of covid because it gives you something else to cling on to you know that over millions of years these things these amazing little structures have fought and prevailed through far worse things than this pandemic that we've got now and we can do the same too and i find that plants help me with that and help me to think forward to the future. So number nine, some people say that plants can help to clear the air, not after an argument, <laughs> to actually take poisons and unnatural elements from the air. Um, go outside my house and there's cars going past and they're obviously pumping the air full of things that we don't want to breathe whereas the plants remove them for us they have a natural way of doing it now how effective that is in terms of whether it makes much difference to us i don't know there is some debate over that but i'm sure it doesn't do any harm one thing's for certain i'm standing here now and i know that in this light this Boston fern, Boston fern is supposedly well known for it actually, but this Boston fern and all the other plants are actually feeding the air or, or supplying the air with oxygen. And I like to breathe oxygen, it's a good thing for me to breathe. So just by having plants around, uh, you know that the air uh, is going to be sweeter, it's going to be better, it's going to filter out all that horrible stuff that gets pumped out of cars. And I'm to blame as much as everybody else, I like my car. Um, but having the tropical plants around all year round can certainly give you that little oxygen boost when you come into your grow room or your greenhouse. Okay, so we're nearly there. Number 10 is about improving relationships. Maybe I'm pushing the envelope a little bit here. Um, how can it improve relationships? Well, you're caring for something. Yeah, it's a bit like having a pet. Um, having a pet, I think, helps children and adults as well to, to think about somebody else other than themselves. They don't put themselves first because they've got to look after that other living thing that is dependent on them, 100% dependent on them for survival. And in my greenhouse, every single plant in here is dependent on me for survival. So it's gonna give me that sense if I needed it, but it's gonna give me that sense of responsibility and to know that whatever I do has an effect on a living thing. So I think that can help relationships, can't it? Because it's gonna give you uh, some of those sought after characteristics that make you into a good person. And finally, number 11, it's a hobby. Growing tropical plants is a hobby. But unlike gardening in a temperate climate, growing tropical plants is a hobby that lasts all year round. I don't need to stop for several months. I know that it's gonna carry on and carry on all through the year, all through the seasons. And as I said earlier, it's always spring and summer over in my greenhouse. And I'm really, really looking forward to this twinkle coming out up here. So it's giving me that sense of looking to the future. I'm extremely looking forward to this other twinkle, giving me another set of blooms on these other two spikes. I'm very much looking forward to my Miltoniopsis through here that we were talking about earlier giving me some blooms. I have a uh, cymbidium here that Ed gave me, but I have another one that he gave me over here. I have no idea what it is. And I'm very much looking forward to that coming. I've got a catlia over here that's got some sheath that's about to come. So I'm looking forward to that. So it's not just about the past, it's about the future as well. I've got this epicat layer over here with one, two, three, four unopened spikes and a spectacular open bloom spike there giving me lots and lots of color i'm very much looking forward to that there's things happening all the time so what better hobby than something that gives you satisfaction it gives you learning it gives you oxygen it gives you well-being self-esteem 
good mental health and it just all in all makes you feel good and makes you look forward to the future so that's my little advert for growing tropical plants i would love to hear from people to see what it gives you if you're an orchid grower if you're a Tredescantia grower, if you're a carnivorous plant grower, if you're a Streptocarpus grower, a Caleri grower, an Apenthes grower, a Begonia grower, whatever it is you grow, put in the comments, what does it give you? What do you take from that? Is it the same as what I've put there or are there some other things that I've not thought about? So if you enjoyed this video, if you like plants, give me a thumbs up, write a comment and for now I'll see you on the next one. Bye.